I honestly think, and this is my opinion, that the Drake equation, this, this famed equation that is used to predict the number of intelligent species in the galaxy that we can talk to is useless. It is of no value. It's of no value scientifically because you don't learn anything by solving it. Let's say you know it's this big number uh, that you're going after the number of intelligent species that we can talk to, and then there's a bunch of smaller numbers, you know, star formation rate, for what fraction of stars host planets, which one of these hosts life, blah, 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 which one of these are, are actually talking, and you get this number. Let's say you... You make estimates, you make guesses, you make measurements, you, you, you get error bars, you get uncertainties, you get a range. Have you learned anything about life in the galaxy? No. No. Because there are so many things that the Drake equation either assumes or sweeps under the rug or ignores that you haven't made a prediction. All you've done, all you've done is you can just say, well, I can just guess. I can just guess right now. There are, there are 4,800 intelligent species in the Milky Way galaxy. There you go. There's my guess. You know, send it to Vegas odds, whatever. Let's Lloyd's of London. Let's play taking bets. Or I can take the Drake equation and I can plug in a dozen, half a dozen, whatever, a bunch of guesses and end up with the same number. I, But in the end, it's still a guess because so much of it is unknown. In the end, it is still a guess. Have you ever heard the phrase garbage in, garbage out? The Drake equation just takes our ignorance about a problem, chops it up into a bunch of smaller problems of which we are still ignorant, and multiplies them together. And you get this like ignorant sausage at the end of it that produces this number that is totally meaningless, that just encapsulates all your assumptions that you put in. What was the value in that? What was the utility? What did we learn? Did we really advance? And so that's, I mean, just look at the ranges. Even, even Drake and company, when they, when they started playing around this equa- with this equation, they guessed in the Milky Way galaxy, there's somewhere between 1,000 and 100 million intelligent species in the Milky Way. Thanks. Okay. I could have just guessed that, and I didn't need the Drake equation. The most recent paper I read about this, and there's a paper using the Drake equation every few months, said there's zero. There's zero. But all the authors did was just put in assumptions into the individual parameters to make sure at the end they got zero. They could have just said zero. They could have just said zero. So it's of no value scientifically because you can't actually make predictions. You're just making guesses. But the common argument is, well, no, it's not a scientific theory. It's not physics, it's philosophy. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with philosophy. Any philosophers in the audience, or if you have friends or family, give them a hearty handshake. Science itself is a branch of philosophy. I have tons of respect for philosophy as a discipline. I don't think the Drake equation is useful for philosophers either. The common argument is, oh, this is just used to spark discussion, to start us thinking about the ways that life can be generated so that we can frame our thinking and organize our thoughts. Are our thoughts any more organized with the Drake equation in our lives? Have we advanced or refined our understanding of how life can arise in the galaxy? Or did we just encode our own ignorance and biases? We only have one example of life appearing in the galaxy, us. And we're based on a certain set of conditions. We arose in a certain environment around a certain kind of star. Could life arise that looks just like us? Probably. Could life arise that looks totally different? Probably. Does the Drake equation capture that? No. It just encodes our ignorance and bias. Are our thoughts any more organized with the Drake equation when it comes to life? Or do we spend our time 
arguing about these individual parameters and how many parameters and the relationship between the parameters and how do we go about measuring those parameters and, and how do we tighten this and do that when really the discussion is about how many intelligent species are in the galaxy. Something that we can directly potentially detect. The question of are we alone in the universe is a scientific question. It is a question that we can tackle using scientific techniques. The Drake equation is not the route to doing that. Direct observation is the route to doing it. We can listen with SETI, search for extraterrestrial intelligence. We can listen for radio signals that sound artificial. We can hunt for biosignatures on exoplanets. We can just map out exoplanets. We're just looking. We're just doing the job. Not bothering to chop the problem up like the Drake equation and try to solve all these individual problems. We're just going for the big number. We're just looking ourselves. We don't need the Drake equation. The Drake equation gives us a false direction. The Drake equation says if you want to understand how life originates in the Milky Way galaxy and what, who we can potentially talk to, you must follow this path, but that is not the only path. It's much simpler. It's much more straightforward to just search for life, to just listen for signals, look for atmospheres, look for signs of photosynthesis, look for radio signals, the whole deal. It's much more straightforward. And you skip all the stuff about the Drake equation. So I don't think the Drake equation works either physically because it's not a physics equation. I don't think it's a science equation. I don't think it's a philosophy equation. But again, that's just me. This is just my opinion, my views of the Drake equation. I personally don't find the Drake equation useful. I know it had historical significance. It spurred a lot of discussions in the 1960s. It's not the 1960s anymore. And we don't have to hang on to things from the 1960s, do we? Feel free to disagree. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Make sure notifications are turned on. Go to patreon.com slash pmstarter. There's a link right here floating next to my body where you can keep this show going. Thank you so much for watching.